Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we add a Wiggler and PD Piranha to the cast of this show. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about the news from the week, including the news coming out of limited the, the Limited Run Games Showcase. And then on Thursday, we are discussing our favorite Nintendo Nights with special guest Jeremy Schmidt. But in the meantime, Mark, how's it going? It's going great. Um, I think it's notable that we're adding a Wiggler and a PD Piranha. But not Kamek. Get Kamek out of here. I'm not into it. We'll talk about it more in a little bit. But like, yeah, I, just, I don't. I don't. I don't need. I don't need a little magic group right there. <laughs> Mark, can I tell you something that happened to me the other day? Yeah, night? please. So I was. Uh, I had gotten home late. I was at a, a friend's uh, party, um, a friend's show actually, um, and uh, uh, you know, it was like I just need something to watch while I like wind down while I go to sleep. Okay, and I was like, Frasier, I'll watch an episode of Frasier. Turn on the old Paramount Plus, fire it up. You know, hey, baby, I hear the blues calling, toss salads, scrambled eggs. Uh, fr- first, you know, like uh, eight minutes or so of Frasier, like going great, right? Uh, and then uh, Paramount Plus, as it will do, uh, goes to commercial, cuts to a commercial. Uh, and I'm, I'm like on my phone and I glance up uh, and I see in the upper left corner, you know, there's that little like timer, that little uh-huh. like, countdown there. Uh, by the time I look up at it, uh, 597 seconds. <laughs> They were serving me 10 minutes of commercials during the first commercial break in Frasier. That's like... Uh, cause 10 <laughs> minutes! Because Frasier episodes are what, like 24 minutes long? 22, yeah. Yeah. Um, and who knows what the, the second commercial break could have been another 10 minutes. You're right. That's that's pretty out of control. Uh, how do you choose... There's so many episodes of Frasier. Yeah. How, how do you choose... I feel like, you know, if I'm trying to sit down and be like, I'm just going to watch an episode of The Simpsons, it takes me all just as long to, like, right, figure right, out right. which one I'm going to watch. Well, I don't know Frasier as well, so it's a little bit more of just, like, a, a stab in the dark, Oh, right? sure, yeah. Um, where, like, uh, uh, and, and currently, I, I think I'm somewhere in, like, season three of Frasier, um, and I think I just started the beginning of season three, uh, and has been, like, a very slow, like, every now and then, I'll I've never, watch. I've never watched, I've never seen Frasier. It's good. I've never seen Cheers. Like, that whole oh, Cheers, Cheers is universe <laughs> yeah. is just, uh, it's I just think, those two. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I've seen um, <laughs> one episode of Frasier that somebody recommended to me as, like, an entry point. It was like, they go to a spa, and it's not like I didn't like it. Yeah. It's just, it just never, I've just never, like wanted to pursue it you know what i mean uh if you recall when we uh did a an episode on like licensed games that we would like to see um or like mashups between like sitcoms maybe this is what it was is mashups between sitcoms and nintendo games uh no this is what it was it was when we were pitching game and watch games um, oh, yeah. that, that would be different uh different licenses i was pitching a uh a uh fraser game and watch based on uh the episode uh, called Three Valentines, uh, well, and it starts with uh, Niles um, like ironing his pants, and things just go horribly wrong. Um, so, uh, so we've talked about it on the show. <laughs> we've talked about Frasier on the show a little bit before. Are you sure that Mash isn't part of the Cheers universe? I don't know why I'm thinking that. That no. can't be true, no, right? No, I mean it definitely is not true. They're both TV shows. Is that what you mean? <laughs> That is. That's what I mean, for sure. <laughs> uh, if you would like to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, where we have a uh, Patreon, uh, and you can check out uh, the rewards that we have there for people who subscribe at the 8-bit or the 16-bit levels. Uh, we just finished up a uh, series that we were calling NCS Detective Club. We called it that because that was its name, um, but <laughs> we, we watched Columbo, we watched Murder, She Wrote, we watched all these uh, great detective shows, um, and then talked about them. Uh, and Mark, we are now embarking on NCS Goes Broadway. Uh, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we are uh, talking about Broadway shows. Yeah. We started with Chicago, and we are going to be doing... Well, hold on. We are announcing oh, it on, we're announcing on, it on Thursday. Episode. That's yeah. right. I totally forgot. So we're doing something yes. uh, for the next episode. Ooh, what a tease. And then also, uh, if you're members at the 8 or 16-bit, supporters of the 8 or 16-bit 
level, you know, the next time we get ready to do a new miniseries, mm-hmm. you'll be able to help decide what that miniseries should be by voting in a poll. Uh, patron, <laughs> patron exclusive poll. That's right. Um, also, uh, actually, we I believe we had the poll open to also the the four bit. Um, yes, but a Patreon exclusive poll. Oh, yeah. yes, I see, I see. Uh-huh. Um, all of that, and you can join our Discord where people are talking about Nintendo stuff all the time, talking about the show, talking about the mini series that we're recording on uh, for um, Patreon. All that stuff. All you gotta do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com, and we will send you an invitation. To the Discord, um, Mark, we also do uh, kind of have a, a, a Twitter still um, where someone reached out to us. Uh, uh, we were uh, got, got a, a, a direct message from at Husky Pants uh, K N P N, so maybe at Husky Pants Kingpin, um, saying uh, w- a picture of the uh, Mario Oreos on store shelves, uh, and just said no pre order necessary. Uh, and I and to which I responded, maybe I should swing by the Ralphs on my way over to Mark's and pick up these uh, and surprise you on mic with those Oreos. Mark. Oh, and, that's, and, and that is happening. No, they're sold out everywhere. <laughs> I went to Ralph's and I went to CVS and I, I, they're, they're not there. Um, so wherever this uh, listener is writing to us from, they have better stock sh- uh, store shelves than we have here in Los Angeles. Oh, that's so funny. I, uh, listeners, Patrick like reached into his bag and everything. <laughs> pulled nothing yeah, I out. did. I did. I was, I was really working hard to be disappointing there. Um, so no Oreos. Maybe I'll surprise you at a later date when I've got more time to prep. You know, I I think, honestly, you probably could have blindfolded me and then, like, given me a regular Oreo and okay. then just said that Mark, it was a Mario for the last Oreo. time, we're not doing the show blindfolded. <laughs> I'll keep pitching it until <laughs> it happens. It's never going to work. Uh, all right. Let's, let's get into what we've been playing this week. Mark, I'm ready to issue my first. Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, Tetris 99 ticket update in a long time. Dun 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 um, so, you know, we're climbing ever, ever, ever closer. I know I'm, uh, I'm sc- trying to think I'm scrambling, like what we're going to do when you reach 999, it's going to be big. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to track down a bag of those Oreos. Yeah. yeah good luck. <laughs> and you're going to eat it blindfolded. <laughs> Not to put it all on you, but I feel like you need to plan and execute whatever's <laughs> going to happen because I'm the one earning these tickets. No, no, no. You got that's, me? That's fair. <laughs> you got that's me? fair. No, no, no. It's totally fair. I'm not planning my own surprise party <laughs> yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. No, no, no. You shouldn't have to. Uh, do you want to talk about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe yeah, and the let's do DLC it. tracks? Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, you know, the uh, Wave 5 of the Mario Kart uh, DLC um, came out last week. Uh, it includes the Feather Cup, which is uh, uh, Athens Drift, Daisy Cruiser, Mo- Moonview Highway, and Squeaky Clean Sprint. The Cherry Cup, which includes Los Angeles Laps, Sunset Wilds, Koopa Cape, and Vancouver Velocity, and then also three characters were added, Kamek, Petey Piranha, and The Wiggler. Um, uh, the Mark- Wiggler. I like that. Like, The Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's just Joker, but this is The Wiggler. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, The, the Wiggler! Wiggler. Um, no, uh, Sarah and I used to do the, like, Don Pardo voice, but introducing Smash Brothers characters, so it would be like... You know, musical guest, Mr. Game and Watch, featuring <laughs> Wario. The voice is really close. It's really close. <laughs> oh, he got stuck in Pardo, folks. <laughs> all right, all right. I got to. Uh, yeah, tell me about your experience messing around with the new tracks. Yeah, uh, I really liked Athens Dash. I thought that one was really cool. Um, Athens, is it Drift or Dash? No, I think it's Dash. Uh, so th- I'm on Nintendo.com. And they call it uh, Athens Drift. Oh, well, maybe it is Drift. I mean, maybe they're wrong, though. <laughs> like, if they're wrong, I want I want us to be right. All right. I don't really know how we solve this other than... I'm looking it up. Oh, okay. It might be called Ath- Athens Dash. Should I, get my, should I get my Switch? Maybe. Because I think we're both looking at different sources. 
Okay, so it's definitely called Athens Dash in Mario Kart Tour. Okay. I wonder if its name was changed to... Oh, that's possible. To Athens Drift, but why would it be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I am I'm on the Nintendo website. <laughs> no, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Well, reg- either one... Athens. I'm just gonna... You know what? I'm just gonna get my Switch. Let's just pause for a second. All right. Okay, Mark has returned now. He's got his switch in his hand. He is selecting tracks, uh, and we're going to find out the name of this, this Athens uh, track here. We're going to find out exactly what it says in the game itself. A reminder that the Nintendo website says, from tour, Athens Drift. So it is Dash in it the game. It is Athens Dash. Yeah, so this might be a great moment in copywriting. Yeah, it is a, a truly a, a wonderful moment in copywriting. Um. <laughs> Glad we solved that. I can't now trust the rest of this information. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, the list that I have, everything yes. you said sounds correct. Um, but yeah, I liked Athens Dash a lot, and I loved Squeaky Clean Sprint. Squeaky Clean Sprint is great. It is so cute. The fact that there is a uh, wedding ring down the drain is so funny. Like I, it's just it's it's just like perfect little bits of comedy. Um, I, there are some things in Squeaky Clean Sprint that don't make sense. Why are there cassette tapes in the in the bathroom? I don't care. I love it. Yeah, uh, I feel like because uh, there was another one in a uh, Mario Kart track from the GBA that was like remade for eight deluxe. I'm trying to f- um, that we in our ranking. Yeah. I. Uh, liked it a lot it's the like ribbon road yes yeah. ribbon road and so there's something about like the these mario kart levels where yes. you're like shrunk down or yes. in like oversized uh areas that well, are just truly, a ton this, of fun this could be what mario kart 9 is is honey i shrunk the cart oh uh-huh. like and just boy how old is that reference <laughs> uh 30 years 30 years that's a that's a 30 year At old least. joke yeah um, but regardless, uh, no matter how quickly I'm uh, turning into dust in front of you as I age so rapidly, um, if, if like all of the tracks were uh, you're in, you're tiny in, uh-huh. you know, so basically yeah. Pikmin cart is, I guess, what I'm pitching. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a great, great gimmick. Mm-hmm. I will say, okay, so now that uh, Los Angeles laughs, yes, has happened to us. Yeah, I have. There's a grade A joke in there. <laughs> The joke that the third lap is just driving through oil fields. <laughs> it is so It's so I was funny. Like, I was like, I couldn't. I, I feel like now I understand what other people <laughs> who have already had, you know, been Mario Kart toured. Yeah. Like their city. And they're like, this doesn't make any sense. Right. And now, now it's like, you got toured. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I'm like playing Los Angeles laps. And I'm like. What? Because <laughs> like, you sort of like start in like Venice or Santa Monica, uh-huh, right? Like you're right. at the beach where there's like skate park stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right, that that all like kind of tracks. And you're kind of, I guess, going downtown after that. And do then you go downtown? There's like, a part where you're in Rodeo Drive. There's is that definitely what that's Rodeo to be? Drive in there, and like the the Watts sculpture is is in uh, there uh-huh, as well. Uh huh. And then the oil fields, but for the <laughs> most part, you're on the west side. <laughs> the oil fields take up oil so much so of the track. Funny. It is so funny, and like truly, if you are ever like uh, driving to LAX and you go like a weird way, like take La Cienega, I think, um, then you will see these like vast stretches of like. These oil drilling machines, yeah. and you're like, "What?" I'm st- within Los Angeles city limits, and it does feel like you're in the Twilight Zone or something. But for that to be the thing that they glom onto, and so now, you know, I'm now I'm rethinking where I'm like, "Huh? I guess, um, you know, because uh, like, uh, I guess Athens Dash is not an exact replica of what should I, I should expect." Are you if trying I go to, to tell me there are no thwomps in the Berlin Wall? <laughs> I don't believe you, Mark. Uh, that being said, I did think Vancouver Velocity was a lot of fun. There's a lot it of good really shy guy like dancing action. Yeah, in this in Vancouver Velocity, you go to a like a hockey arena or like a sk- skating arena. Yeah, there's some ice skating and there's uh, yeah. like shy guys ice skating, but then in also like circle. some on a platform yep. like doing a little dance. But my favorite was in Sunset Wilds. Which uh, I liked a lot, but I especially like there's some shy guy like miners who are dancing in the middle of the track. They're in the middle of the track, which makes them like a, an insane hazard. Can I play a little bit of the music from the uh, Sunset Wilds? Yeah. Because there is uh, something that happens every now and then in a Nintendo property where 
the instrumentation is so bizarre and so transparent where you can just like hear every single piece of it. Um, and I get some of that from uh, Sunset Wilds. There's just like that trumpet is so clear and it's just like is the sound of a trumpet that's the sound of a violin yeah and like the the trumpet part at the beginning like kind of has this like uh old west like rodeo thing going for it yeah. but not fully i like it i i like this track a lot yeah i, I like this track a lot too um there's a uh, the, the music almost uh, it reminds me of the What's the name of the Matt Grading show on Netflix, the fantasy one? Like the Disenchanted? No, that's the... Disenchantment? Maybe. Something like that. Um, it reminds me of uh, the the opening music from, from that show as well. Oh, uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I, I, th- I think... Uh, honestly, I think all the tracks are pretty fun. Um, uh, let's see. What, what, uh, maybe the Moonview Highway doesn't uh, live up to uh, my memories of it on, on Wii. Um, but uh, the Daisy Cruiser, fun to be on that cruise ship again. Yeah, fun to be on that cruise ship again. I think the uh, that you can go underwater, that you can like go in the pool. Yeah, and that's then fun. like, and that's new, right? Could you do that in Double Dash? I, don't I can't remember. remember. Yeah. Um, there there are uh, little uh, Goombas in inner tubes like floating around in the pool. <laughs> that's yeah. that's really cute. Uh huh. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I if they would do this forever, if they would do this three times a year for the rest of my life. Uh, I would check in uh, every single time and be excited about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you about the new playable characters. Are you playing as uh, Petey Piranha, Kamek, or, or the Wiggler? I actually really like Kamek. Oh, you do? I, I do. I, I, I like playing as Kamek a lot. I and... apologize for my Kamek slander <laughs> earlier. Uh, I just don't think he's funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I, liked, I liked playing as Kamek a lot, surprisingly. Because normally I'm a Dry Bones uh man but maybe it is possible that they're like the same type of character you know what i mean yeah sure just like physically yeah um uh, i i do like that uh kamek has like the the wand Uh uh-huh um and the wand is like a a, an it's not an item you can't use it but like it doesn't obey by the same rules as like the character model so when he gets inked uh he's covered in black ink but that wand Stays clean. And he also has like a also like he there's like little like flourishes with the wand yeah. when he's like jumping and stuff. Did you play as any of them? Uh yeah, I played it. I played as all of them. Um I think my favorite is Wiggler. Um and it's because he's got like his hurt animation when he's like hit with a shell or something. He gets like all red and like his face turns oh, that's into funny. like mean Wiggler. Um and like the the little like clouds of anger popping off of his head. Um I love that. Uh, and yeah, so I, I think I'm 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 very excited to play more as as Wiggler. Should we talk about Tears of the Kingdom? Let's talk about Tears of the Kingdom. So I feel like from the last time we talked, you have beaten Ganon now, right? Did I not talk about having beaten Ganon on the last? I can't remember. Pod, I feel like I did. Oh, okay. Um, because I. Yeah, because it, it was over uh, over the weekend that I not this last weekend, but the weekend before. Um, so yeah, I remain uh, in post game uh, paradise. I just kind of like running around, um, finishing up. You know, like I finished the uh, Lucky Clover um, Gazette uh, missions. I found the last of the um, like ancient Hyrulean texts that need to be translated, uh, and I'm kind of just like going through. Uh, those like side missions and uh, like cleaning them up um, as as they are of interest to me. Um, but uh, where where are you right now? Yeah, I'm kind of so I have not defeated Ganon yet. Yes, but uh, I did like you know like we talked about last week. I did the four um like regional disruptions or whatever they're called, and then the thing after that, and then the thing after that. But now I'm just in. Uh, now I'm in. I'm in cleanup mode as well. Yeah. And I'm at the point in the game where, like, I have enough hearts, I have enough good weapons, that nothing really phases me anymore. Like, sure. fights will still, you know, like, take resources and time. But, like, I I wanted to... I've been saying I want to find out what the deal is with the Deku tree. Yeah. And so, like, I went and did that. And, like, that 
um, did not take me very long because I was well resourced. It was yeah. like, oh, okay, like I can, I can do this. Yeah, you know, well, it's like not a big deal. Really, all you have to do, like uh, resource wise or combat wise, is there's a, a gloom hand and a phantom Ganon. Yeah, like, e- exactly, and exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so it's just like stuff like that where, like, the first time you know I encountered Phantom Ganon. And I did it in a little bit different order than you did because mm-hmm. I already have the Master Sword and everything. Right. So right. I have the Master Sword and I have one of – and I've, like, equipped it with one of those, like, um, like construct monster things, you know, like the level three where they drop the oh, yeah, sure. three gear, spinning gear thing that increases your – um weapon by like 30 or something if you fuse it and so i have that equipped with like the master sword and so and the master sword like doubles already i think when you're uh fighting like a phantom ganon and so you know like it, i'm kind of at the point where um i'm just muscling through things yes and so and um which i'm enjoying because i'm able to knock out stuff really quickly but it does make me realize oh yeah like i'm definitely I know I said this last week, but, like, kind of coming to the end. Right, um, I'm, right, I'm right, hitting, right. like, a ceiling as far as, like, you know, how, like, difficult the game can be where the, uh, it, nothing really feels, like, that challenging right now. Yeah, totally. Um, have you done um, – I've, I've, I've been there once and I fought one Lionel, but have you been to the, uh, the floating coliseum in the uh, – in the depths? No, I haven't yet. So there is, like, a, a, a uh, like, combat gauntlet down there that is just, like – wave after wave of uh progressively harder Lionels. Um and I, I wanna like I wanna be able to clear that because uh-huh. that feels like a, a fun goal to set and then like thing thing to do. Um because like you know I uh a couple weeks ago was so excited when I killed a King Gliok, the one on the floating island above the uh the um lightning temple. Uh huh. Um but uh, the other day I went and did, there's one on like the, so that's the very southwest corner. I went to the very southeast corner where there's a floating island and there was a King Gliak up there. And I was like, all right, here we go. And then, you know, because I've been playing for like 50 more hours since I killed the last one, uh, I had so many more resources and was just like better equipped in every way to uh, take him down. Um, and so I'm like, I, I'm like, oh no, even the very hard challenges right, are like yeah. not that hard. Yeah. And that's a, that's how I remember like the end of my Breath of the Wild experience Absolutely. was the same way. Yeah. And that was kind of the indication where it was like, oh, okay, I'm kind of um, not running out of things to do because there were a lot of side quests and stuff I didn't do in it. But yeah. that's how I could tell I was like winding down. Uh, where are you shrine wise? I have like 102 okay, or yeah. something like that. I think I have 104. And I'm not really sure how many more I'm going to do. In Breath of the Wild, I got all of them. Yeah. Um, and I kind of want to do that here, but then I'm also like, the the other thing that I've been neglecting is the depths. And you yeah. know, as part of the um, uh, the stuff with the Deku Tree and everything, like I did some of that, but there's still so many of the light routes that I haven't yeah. gotten yet. And so I'm like, well, how much of that do I want to do? You know, every time I say, oh, I think I'm coming to an end, and then I actually start the game, right? And there's like a million things where it's like, ah, oh, actually, I want to go figure that out, or I want to go do that, or I haven't done, I haven't tried that yet. So hard to know exactly, but honestly, with Pikmin Four coming out, Ooh, I yeah. am, um, I'm not really, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean that that is a great question. Pikmin Four comes out on Friday. Like, do you think there's a world where you, uh, like, stop running around Hyrule and you just like go and take take out Ganon and then move on to Pikmin? I. I don't think I... You're not quite there yet. I don't have enough love, like, for Pikmin yet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe if I bought Pikmin and started playing it, I was like, whoa, this is incredible. Like, I'm willing to put down Tears of the Kingdom. But even though Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have its hooks in me like it did before, where I was, like, always thinking about Tears of the Kingdom, whenever I turn it on, I, yeah, it I'm just, having, I'm just yeah. having such, like, a blast. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, even after having beaten it, now still when I turn it on, I'm like, oh yeah, there goes like four or five hours. Because yeah. like all I want to do is just like run around and like there are story things to do, uh, but there's also just like the you know like things that I've prioritized of like oh yeah I want to make sure I'm doing this or um, like uh, one of the things that is been good for motivating me to explore the depths more is uh i want to expand my battery uh, uh-huh. uh, and you need a lot of zonite for that um and so like it's just you have to do a lot of uh taking of those little settlements down there in the depths um so that you can trade it for 
things that then get refined that turn your battery better. There's also things in that like in Breath of the Wild where I don't know if there's an equivalent in Tears of the Kingdom because I haven't like gone to check. But you know, there were like surprises where like in Breath of the Wild there was the um uh, instead of like a great fairy fountain, it was a like horse god that could resurrect a horse oh, yeah. of yours that like died. She's around. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's like that sort of stuff that uh I because I put so much into Breath of the Wild and, like, looking for shrines and all that kind of stuff, that I encountered a lot of that, and that was some of my most, ex- like, fun stuff in Breath yeah, of the Wild, yeah, like, yeah. those, like, moments of that felt like discovery. And in Tears of the Kingdom, I have had moments like that, but because I feel like I'm not pu- putting the same amount of time into it, I feel a sense of, like, FOMO uh, where it, where I'm like, oh, but if I put it down... You know, I, right. I'm not going. I'm not missing? going to yeah. experience those things. Yeah. So what I don't I think, know. It's tough. It's weird because I do think a lot of that stuff is in the depths too. Like, it's it's not as like immediately fun or like attractive to explore the depths. Uh huh. Um, but like, man, when you find something weird in the depths, you find something weird <laughs> in the depths. Um, and like scary and challenging and all that kind of stuff. So, um. Yeah, I don't. I I I don't really have any idea when I'll when I'll stop playing this game. Yeah, I imagine that once Pikmin comes out, um, that'll be like the beginning of the end for for me. Then that'll just like start to kind of trail off. Yeah, I did. That's interesting that the you're talking about the Colosseum in the depths. That's all Lionels because in Breath of the Wild there was the Colosseum. Yes. that was all Lionels, but now. I haven't done it yet, but I threw down one of my markers so I could go back to it. Yeah. Um, there's like a, at least the first one for me is a lightning gliok. And so I wonder if it's the same sort of thing where you kill a lightning gliok and then another gliok shows up and then eventually it's a king gliok yeah, or something maybe. like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, there, uh, I, I know there's the, the fire gliok that is like on the bridge. I've got to fight that thing. I haven't fought it. I haven't been to the bridge yet. You've seen it though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that's uh, the I I I saw it like uh, originally and was like, oh, I'm not going because you know I had like five hearts. Or whatever. <laughs> I'm not going over there. Um, and uh, then just like avoided it forever, and now I'm not even really like sure where it is. <laughs> you know? Um, but maybe I should go over there and and dust that gliok. Just get yeah. rid of them. Yeah, I haven't. Have I fought a? I don't think I fought a fire one yet in general. Yeah, I don't know if I have either. Um, what, but I, I think one of the things that I am enjoying about doing some of the side quests that I've been neglecting up to this point is it takes me to different corners of the map that yeah. I either like didn't spend that much time exploring this time, or it feels like you know I've opened up all of the towers, but I didn't. I don't know how much time I've spent in each. Like I like this time I right. spent I've spent very little time in the Gerudo Desert, so I know their stuff there that i'm missing yeah um because i haven't fought one of the big like sand monster things M- Molduga. Like, yeah like yeah. i haven't i haven't done that yet um there was a chance to in one of those side quests where it's like oh this person's uh on like some like i uh, uh sand islander you know and when yeah. you go out there there's a Molduga, and i was just like i don't i'm not gonna do this right I'm now, I want this to now. <laughs> yeah and so, so it's just interesting you know how uh the experience is so similar and like, I haven't done any of the Yiga. I've done, like, one or two Yiga clan things. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's weird because it seems like there is a lot of Yiga stuff here. Um, and in a way that's less annoying than it was in uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh-huh. Um, it's not like every single person you encounter is, like, secretly a, a, a Yiga in disguise. I think I have one piece of the Yiga armor set. Oh, uh-huh. I think I just have one. And it seems like a lot of that stuff is down in the depths this time, too, that they have, like, fortresses down there. They do have fortresses down there, yes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we continue to play Breath of the, uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I am starting to get like a little sad thinking that like my experience with it is is about and to be seemingly over. no DLC. Seemingly no DLC. I wonder how well the game is sold at this point. Like, yeah, it'll be really interesting when Nintendo does gives their next like quarterly up, uh, you know, quarterly earnings yeah. in August or something, and. To find out how well it sold. Yeah. Like, like it, at, at this point, I've had my experience with the narrative within the game. Now I want to, like, start <laughs> taking in the narrative out, out, outside of the game. Um, all right. That's what we've been playing this week. Let's get into the new releases and what we might be playing next week. Hey, we've talked about it. We've talked Friday, about it. Friday, July 21st, Here Pikmin it comes. 4 is released um 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be picking this up with vouchers uh, or with a voucher, uh, grabbing it digitally. There was a moment where I was like, I think I have Pikmin 3 uh, Deluxe uh, as a as a physical cart. It would be fun to pick up Pikmin's 1 and 2 as a physical cart. And then also this one is – but it turns out I actually bought Pikmin 3 Deluxe uh, digitally. So now the whole plan is out the window. <laughs> Just yeah, I, everything digital. I think I, I've used my voucher on Tears of the Kingdom and on um, the Kirby game that came out in February. Yeah. Um, Return to Dreamland Deluxe. But uh, I and Magalore's Fury or whatever that was called. <laughs> and then I think I'm going to set a, get another set of vouchers and get like Pikmin 4. And then there's just like so much coming out. There are two Mario through the rest of the year. There, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so Pikmin 4, and then also on Friday, the Pyra and Mithra amiibo from the Super Smash Brothers series is also released. Uh, which is very exciting, I believe. You know what? I, I was saying, so they came out before Kazuya, the character, but did the Kazuya amiibo already come out? It feels unlikely, because I feel like they've been releasing them in order that they were added to the um, Fighter Pass. It looks like you can buy him. So uh, okay, so maybe he's out. Maybe maybe they uh, reversed order there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean the because uh, th- there's no universe where we're gonna see a, a Sora amiibo. I don't think. Um, I guess that is like one one. If they want to pull out one more trick for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, just to be like it truly is the ultimate version. It would of this be game. so weird to announce it now, though. It would be yes, truly bizarre to be uh, like years. After uh, finishing updating the game to be like, and now Sora. Uh, f- and also Square Enix is holding a July sale, which sees all of their usual suspects reduced in price. Um, so good deals on Final Fantasy games. Dragon Quest 1 through 3 are all present. And then there are a few that Patrick wanted to point out beyond that usual stuff. Yes. Uh, I, and, you know, like Square Enix games do go on sale pretty regularly um and it, this is this is most of like the the normal stuff that goes on sale um and usually you know for like half off or something but the things of note include uh theatrhythm final bar line um which is normally a 50 dollar game is now 37.50 so that's you know like a quarter off of uh this you know very recent um rhythm game it's the lowest price it's been so far Chocobo GP uh, is now um, $25. It's normally $50. And again, just as a reminder, this is the version of the game that has all of the, like, uh, DLC that they added to it and were trying to, like, microtransact. Like, so they, they, like, retrofitted the game to have all the content in it. Now you can get it all for $25. So um, this is as close as I've ever been to uh, picking up Chocobo GP just to see if it's a, a fun kart racer style game. Um, Harvestella, which only came out a couple months ago, is that like a uh, very Square Enixy looking um, like farming sim uh, is half price. So $30 is normally 60 Octopath Traveler 2 is $45 is normally 60 uh, And Tactics Ogre Reborn is normally 50 down to uh, 30 So um, all of those are, I believe those are all lowest prices that we've seen for those uh, to this point. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, anytime there's a Square Enix sale, I'm tempted to buy a, one more Final Fantasy game I'm never going to get around to playing. Uh, it's just neat to uh, see it hit these uh, other games, too. Uh, all right, let's move into our next segment. Which brings us to a regular segment on our... Which brings us to a regular segment on our show. It is time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, we're going off a suggestion today. That's right. From uh, a listener, friend of the show, and supporter, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Uh, Jake's suggestion was rank colors. Uh, a broad category. Um, c- colors, there are a lot of colors. So we thought, how can we how can we narrow this down? Um, and we are turning to our old friends at Crayola. Uh, and we are doing the classic eight crayon set. 
Um, Mark, can you run us through what those colors are? Yes, and so this is, uh, they are black, blue, brown, green, orange, red, violet, and yellow. Uh, very good. So are, uh, how, how, how do you want to approach this? Is there, um, do you have, like, memories of, like, having a fra- favorite crayon as a kid? Um, or, or do you want to go off, like, how you feel about the colors now? Mm, that's interesting. Um, I would say that to, like, now in my life, I am probably more of like a, I feel like my wardrobe is mostly blue, green, black. Black. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, so what, I mean, what are we, what, what, are, what are we ranking here? Colors that we like to wear or colors that like, cause your house isn't any of those things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, we both have sort of like beige houses. <laughs> um, but that's just what houses are. Um, no one has a yellow house. Um, so uh, so what, what, what are we thinking here? Do you have like early standouts? I do feel like the black crayon is a classic. Black crayon is great. Uh-huh. Um, uh, hmm. I also have a hard time with the yellow crayon because it is so – it's like oh, it's specifically with a crayon – it just doesn't show up very well on white white paper. Okay, so we're saying at least now. I mean, we are only we have... ranking the crayons or are we ranking the colors? Like, I gotta know. I get, okay. Uh, we're ranking we're ranking the colors. Okay, because that is uh, the assignment. That's the prompt. Okay, but we are so we're ranking the colors. But it, like, why we are choosing one color over the other is could be for any reason. So you putting yellow at the bottom because you don't like the yellow crayon, I think, is a valid That's valid reason to have yellow down there i think we got to put black at the top or at least near the top well everything looks good in black everything looks good in black um it's just it's cool it's classic there's no white on here which is also like a, an alternative for that right we're just like the sleekness of something in white but like black is both cool and sleek yeah uh you know there's something about a, a, a like a uh red crayon i know we're not i know we're not we're ranking. not we're not ranking the crayons <laughs> i know we're not you guys should toss we, is that, that what you should be doing i don't i don't know the the, the prompt jake said rank the colors okay 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 so the the, the crayons are just a guide for yeah, us yeah 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 okay but should we be ranking the crayons? <laughs> um it can weigh heavily yeah okay uh okay i i really gotta say behind black i think i would put blue yeah I, I, I also got I, I I will totally back that up, and I think some of that is like driven by uh, I wear jeans basically any day that I wear pants, uh, and so like blue is just like in my mind it's like a default part of like what Life. I look like. Yeah, yeah, I mean blue sky, blue ocean, <laughs> yep, baby blues. Yeah, that's right. you know. Don't forget baby blues. Uh-huh. All right, so blue is up there for sure. What about green, the color of life? Oh man, um, I think. This is just going off my gut. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say green and, goes right below blue there, and then red. Uh, that's fine. I feel like I like orange better than red. Um, Do you feel or- orange is too audacious? <laughs> here's here's what, <laughs> look. I, I have to base this off of something, right? Right. And it's like I can imagine myself wearing a red shirt. I don't think I own a red shirt, but I can imagine myself owning one. I can't imagine myself wearing an orange shirt. I get that. Uh huh. I don't know. There's something about red that either that either feels like uh, danger or clown shoes to me. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I know we're not ranking clothing, but it is very <laughs> easy yeah. if you have like red shoes to fall into like bowling shoe territory, right? Or fall into like Ronald McDonald territory, right? Clown shoes. Yeah, just exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> so, Bozo. So so and yeah, it, but like with orange. You have to be careful that you're not following into like Halloween territory. Mm, that's but like why? But that's that is true. That is more of an aesthetic. Yeah. Than like, oops, I'm wearing red. Well, so I'm I'm just I'm I'm glancing around the room. What things in this room are orange? <laughs> There's not a lot of orange here, and they're all on my side of the table. <laughs> um, that I'm I'm drinking a, a can of of sparkling uh, soda that has oranges on it, um, and then also the straps on my PlayStation bag okay. that I carry our recording equipment around in also orange. So so we're leaning towards orange, 
because of your PlayStation bag. Yeah, I mean, and I, your transient can that <laughs> you happen to have in front of you. Oh, look, Al, I'm just pointing things. I'm just pointing them out. I'm not saying it has to be definitive. Yeah, but you didn't point out your the, the focus amp right? that's red. Yeah, and it feels like clown shoes okay, to me. We, we there were only eight. Eight. We have to we finish have to this. Finish so this. we have okay. black, blue, green, orange, red. Yellow. Brown's at the bottom. Brown's at the bottom. I'm sorry, it's the color of poop. There's no gain around it. <laughs> okay. Uh, was that the last one? Uh, violet. Oh, violet. I like violet. Although, can we can we really justify putting all of the cool colors up at the top? What? Uh, may, that just may be our aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, that might just be... Which, it is our ranking. Yeah, great point. Okay, put it below green. <laughs> All right, so uh, brown, number eight, yellow, number seven, red, number six, orange, number five, violet, number four, green, number three, blue, number two, and, of course, black, coming in, number one. Uh, all right, Mark, we were accompanied by an ensemble at the music, Musical Instrument Museum in Phoenix. Let's get into the news. Probably the biggest news in video gaming this last week is that uh, the FTC lost its uh, case for a preliminary injunction against the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition and lost their appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals asking for um, uh, an injunction. And so at this point... At this point... there. So the only thing that is standing in the way of Microsoft closing its deal with Activision Blizzard is which could be happening as early as this morning yeah that's right because july 18th was the um uh original date that the uh acquisition was supposed to close by but probably by the time you're listening to this activision and microsoft have announced like an extension of that um of a few weeks or probably a few months well because really the last uh piece that they are working through here is the cma the regulatory body in the uk you know, um, denied the deal, and Microsoft is appealing that. But they also last week announced that uh, the CMA and Microsoft are, like, trying to come to some sort of agreement. Right. Well, and also just, like, uh, the FTC losing this case, like, adds momentum to right. the, uh, to Microsoft. Uh, so, like, it, it, that, it might be game over at this it, point. Yeah, it, told, it, does, it definitely feels inevitable, especially, like, you know... Uh, in the months prior to the deal, like coming to this point, they had signed Microsoft had signed ten year deals with Nintendo and with Steam, um, and maybe with like GeForce or like there I, were other uh, there were, streaming platforms, maybe like Nvidia. Yeah, but ba yeah. basically saying that um, you know, guaranteeing Call of Duty to be on the platform for ten years, but Sony pointedly like refused to sign that. Until yesterday or Sunday on uh, Twitter, Microsoft announced that Sony had signed a 10 year deal um, guaranteeing, like a 10 year contract guaranteeing that Call of Duty would be on PlayStation for at least 10 more years, which that feels like game over, yeah. you know? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how things work out with the CMA in the UK. But like you said, Patrick, it, it feels like now just a matter of when uh, instead of like if it'll actually happen. Yeah, well, and like you know, the the FTC still has the ability to uh, you know uh, appeal the decision, but like by the time any of that would actually see a courtroom, um, it the the wheels will already be in motion, and maybe a, a a thread that's too deeply interwoven to untangle at that point, right? Yeah, um, and you know they've busted up uh, you know big monopolies before, so like nothing's impossible. Um, but I think the regular, even the regulatory, uh, like agencies are like kind of venturing on the path of like least resistance. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it seems like this thing is a, a more or less a done deal. Yeah. And so, you know, we won't really know the out, like it'll be interesting in 10 years when we're doing an episode of this show yeah. to see how the gaming landscape has changed in that time. Uh, and w if this, and to see if we're still, uh, trading rumors about the next generation <laughs> yeah, switch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Because Nintendo by that point will be like 17 years into unprecedented right. territory that's right. with the switch. Uh, but still milking everything it can out of uh, Mario Galaxy 3 and whatever that comes after Tears of the Kingdom. 
Uh, EA announced that EA Sports FC 24, their replacement for the FIFA franchise, is coming to Switch. And for the first time on the Switch, we'll have feature parity with the other consoles. So FIFA on Switch, since the console launched, has been Legacy Editions, where they were using the same engine as the PS4, Xbox One, and PC versions. Um, whereas, you know, like... Uh, uh, those consoles and I think PS, you know, or I think those consoles, but definitely PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series, are uh, we're running a more modern engine, like uh, a version of the game on the Frostbite engine. So that also means that like the Switch version was missing game modes and like all of these things. Right, it was just like roster updates uh, on like an archaic version of the software, and still sold really well sure um but for the first time uh yeah ea sports fc 24 will run on ea's frostbite engine we'll have feature parity uh on switch on so we're, switch. We're, we're saying that frostbite which was seemingly a non-starter on switch before is now running on or at least some version of it is running yeah. on switch yeah and so uh, do, uh this got me wondering and you know it, we'll never know for sure but it got me wondering if like because this game doesn't have the fifa license that EA was like, let's like really get this thing everywhere so it has the best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if they knew back when like the Switch was launching that you know uh, their FIFA license was winding down, and so it wasn't necessarily worth doing all the effort to put FIFA like you know put the latest version of FIFA on that system. Yeah, and well, wait until I mean I I, I, I I do know that like the uh, the agreements the agreement and the license with FIFA was like. I mean, I'm not. This is not a, a woe is EA kind of thing, but like it was very expensive to do business with with uh, FIFA, um, and so I wonder if they were like, well, we could, uh, you know, throw the money at developing the engineering know how to make um, Frostbite work on Switch, but we see so little of the reward from you know every uh, copy of uh, FIFA that we sell that it wouldn't be worth that investment. If now they're like, no, it's uh, just EA, uh, you know, a football club, um, and they don't have to share that revenue with FIFA, that it could actually they could recoup some of the expense of having developed that. Mm -hmm. So I like that. That's a a, a possible explanation here. Um, is Frostbite what EA runs like everything on? I think so. Yeah. So does that mean that like we could get like the Star Wars Jedi games on Switch? Uh, maybe. My guess is that. Yes, like Frostbite is the base system for all these, but uh, yeah, like yeah, the Frostbite yeah. that's running uh, EA Sports FC is very different from the one that's running um, uh, like the Jedi games. But maybe on a theoretical Switch 2? Well, we'll talk about it in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Limited Run Games streamed a showcase last week, revealing a bunch of physical releases and collections, many of which are coming to Switch. And we're gonna just gonna like plow through a, a couple of these announcements here. Um, there are way more uh, games uh, and, and collections announced um, than what we are going to talk about here. Um, but you know, ch check out their uh, their showcase if you are interested in more. So the Castlevania Advance Collection is getting a physical release, uh, which is cool. The uh, I, did you pick up this collection? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I think we so we both bought this collection. It's got a, at least three good games in it, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's neat that it'll be um, and like there's a, a a collector's edition of it that has like art books and stuff. So um, a, a cool little package there. Tiger Hell, the ultimate collection. No, no, no. Tiger Heli. Oh, Heli. <laughs> <laughs> like like helicopter. Got um, it. Um, yeah, I, I'm about to ask a question that I think I already know the answer to. Have you ever played Tiger Hell? <laughs> no, no, and nobody steal the idea for Tiger Hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. And I will stick with Tiger Heaven. <laughs> um, uh, so it's a it's a like side. Uh, wait, is it side scrolling? I, I might be thinking of POW. Um, it's it's a helicopter combat game. Um, that I remember playing a lot in the arcade. Uh, and really liking. Uh, so I am interested to explore what this uh, complete collect or ultimate collection is. It includes at least Tiger Heli and and uh, and Team Cobra. Um, so I'm I'm very interested to uh, revisit those games. Soundtracks for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games are c being released on CD, vinyl, and cassette. Uh, and it looks like th these are all like the the classic Ninja Turtle games. If it was on the uh, Cowabunga collection last year. It is likely that they are releasing um, a, a soundtrack. Wh I, I get that limited run games is limited run games. Why are they putting these things out on cassette? Yeah, I don't know. Are cassettes back? 
I don't know. Write in Nintendo Cartridge Society <laughs> at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Our cassette's back. I don't. I don't know. Uh, is that why they were in Mario Kart Eight Deluxe? <gasps> Could be. Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Three Complete Edition. Mark, I included this one here for you. Yeah, I've never. Okay. Uh, quick sidebar on my experience with Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. Loved Roller Coaster Tycoon. Loved Roller Coaster Ty- Tycoon Two. Mm-hmm. Um, parents bought Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, but we didn't have a computer that could run it, like because it didn't have the a video card strong enough. They tried, uh, like, uh, very kindly tried to get a video card that would, but we just didn't know enough about computers or like. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah to uh, ever get it to really run. So I have never played t- Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. If only they had tried to get that card meanly. <laughs> <laughs> then you would be a uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, That's right. Expert. Maybe this show would be totally different. It would just be all about Roller Coaster Tycoon. Tycoon Society. Uh, the Shanty, Shantae, Advanced Risky Shantae, Revolution, yeah. uh, which is a lost uh, Shantae sequel that's back in development after 20 years. And will be released on a GBA cart? I don't... The, the, every uh, individual detail of this makes it sound more outlandish than the last. Um, so there was a uh, Shantae, like, Genie game on uh, Game Boy Advance. This is a sequel to it that was never released that I guess there is, like, they're finishing development on it and releasing it on a GBA cart? Oh, it's it's almost like the Metroid Dread of the Shantae series. Yeah, except not being put out on modern hardware. Right. Bizarre. <laughs> Um, from the Limited Run Games Twitter, quote, a spiritual successor to a pair of infamous fantasy adventure titles, Arzette the Jewel of Faramore is a new interactive animated adventure developed by At the Dopster. Yeah, Dopley, I think, is the is the name of the developer. Mark, have, have you seen this? Yeah, it, this is the one that's like the uh, uh, Zelda Philip CDI games, right? Yes, uh, that is it. But they are careful to not say Zelda, <laughs> right, in any of their um, in any of their uh, promotion around it. Just a uh, uh, infamous fantasy adventure title. How funny! Um, and it like it lo- it is effectively evoking the uh, style, uh, like the visual style. Of, of those games. I'm not sure who this is for. <laughs> um, I imagine it could be a good adventure game, a good, like, narrative adventure game. Um, but, like, what weird bones to build off of. Yeah, yeah. That is really funny that we've uh, come to that point. Yes. Uh, the Speaking of which, the Gex <laughs> games are coming to Switch for, uh, via Square Enix and Limited Run games. Uh, Gex being, like, the spy gecko from the, like, PlayStation era. Yeah, I mean, I think some of these games are on, like, 3DO. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, so it, it's uh, the package, which is called the Gex Trilogy, collects Gex from 1995, Gex Enter the Gecko from 1998, and uh, Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko from 1999. Uh there we go. We don't know. We don't know if there are any like improved, uh, Im- like special features or an- anything like that. Um, not that's not normally a thing that we would see from limited run games. Um, that's more of like a digital eclipse kind of move to, you know, have like uh, library content or like gameplay improvements or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, th- this is maybe like the highest profile uh, uh, collection that that was in in the showcase. Um, a really weird like slice of nostalgia. We also got got some more information about the Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection. Had we talked about this thing? I don't think we talked about show? it on okay. the show. Um, so the uh, Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection. There were a lot of great Jurassic Park games uh, in like the the, the nineties, right? Um, and uh, this was either leaked or there was like some like vague press release about it a couple weeks ago, um, and uh, which sort of led to the speculation of like what Jurassic Park games are on this thing. Um, uh, and now we know that it, it only includes the Game Boy, NES, and Super NES um, Jurassic Park games. Uh, Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 2, possibly on, on all three platforms. I'm not familiar with Jurassic Park on NES or Game Boy, really. I'm really just familiar with yeah. Jurassic Park on Super NES. Um, but it means that the Genesis games, which are like sort of uh, legendary, um, Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 2... Uh, don't appear t- so far to be in this collection. Um, and, and there is also a uh, a really cool uh, Sega CD game that's like a- almost a point and click adventure game that like is kind of surprising that it's not, uh, or at least doesn't so far does not appear to be part of this collection. 
Um, I, I made a little note here that uh, Jared Petty, uh, who works with Limited Run Games, was on an episode of IGN's Game Scoop um, uh, last week and was uh, like kind of cagey about what games are actually in this collection. Um, and he seems sort of like thrown to be uh, like representing the collection uh, on on the episode. So like I think he was just going on hoping to like chit chat about games and whatever and then they like devoted a whole segment to the limited run games uh thing so i think he just wasn't quite ready for it so lots more announcements from the limited run games showcase and so you can uh, check out the whole thing if you're interested very good there's a new update coming for disney dreamlight valley called dream snaps um which we know for sure that it adds vanellope from Wreck It Ralph, mm-hmm. but um, not sure really what else. There's is some in this other. Update. There's some other like uh, competitive uh, like game feature that like Dream Snaps is. Again, we don't actually play Disney Dreamlight Valley, <laughs> but every time there's a new update, I'm like, is this is this the one? Okay, yeah. So I went looking for more information about this update. Yes, and uh, here's something that maybe changes. When we will play this, because it feels inevitable at some point. (laughs) But the game is in early access right now. Right. So you have to pay for it up front. But someday it will be free. Right. It'll be free to play. But you'll have to pay for, like, the the good content. Gems or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So maybe... Okay. I could be hanging out with Vanellope right now. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I, I, (laughs) I hear you loud and clear. Um, but yeah, so that, uh, update is coming soon. Uh, and they are disabling video capture on Switch. Um, evidently it was causing the game to crash. Uh, um, so, um, that, that seems okay. Although, like, I, look, the only thing I would like more than to hang out with Vanellope is to be able to send videos of me hanging out with Vanellope. I know. Well, we can, we can, you can take selfies, right? That was like yeah, one of those true. selling points for us in the first place. Yeah. Uh, speaking of updates, we've now gotten some more details about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge Dimension Shellshock DLC. I'm very excited about this DLC. I've been excited about it since they revealed it. Uh, and sort of uh, with the reveal, they were like, Usagi Ojimbo is a playable character. Um, and I was like, that's it. I'm in whatever you need from me. And I think it's free. <laughs> uh, but whatever you need from me, I'm there. I'm, 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 I'm in. Uh, but they uh, released a couple. A couple of videos um, showing off the the new gameplay um, and uh, kind of detailed what uh, what that is going to be. Yeah. So here's the language from the press release: "Quote: Survival mode introduces collectible crystals that allow you to jump from dimension to gem- to, to dimension, with each dimension featuring its own unique look and feel. The extended footage tours the Edo dimension, inspired by Japan. The four turtles in eight fake backgrounds and Splinter, Casey, April, and Usagi in Omni Channel Six. I don't um, really so, know what any of that means. Well, okay, so uh, the uh, the the Edo dimension, uh, you know, is like the sort of ancient Japan and how they're connecting it to uh, uh, um, uh, Usagi. Um, the uh, eight bit, the 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 four turtles in eight bit backgrounds. There are new skins for the characters, so like new outfit, effectively outfits. Um, but one of them is like using the like old arcade game style. Um, like the old NES style, uh, uh, like graphics for the turtles, um, but still with like their modern animations in Shredder's Revenge, looks incredible. Um, uh, and then uh, the the Omni Channel Six was sort of like a multi dimensional like mashup thing that they showed off um, in, um, in 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 these extended look trailers. Um, I mean, it all just seems like a bunch of uh, cool ways to interact with with the game. Um, and like I always worry when a game like this adds just like combat challenges because i'm like oh i i want like i want a little bit more meat on the bone you know like i love the combat in the arkham games but like i can only do so many of those challenge rooms before i don't care anymore um but like the combat in shredder's revenge is so like the loop of it is so fun and so rewarding and like there's no real like platforming in the game or anything like that. Like the the fact that there's uh, moving from challenge room to challenge room is still like sort of uh, if not exploration but like experiential base that you'll see new things, see new enemies. Uh, all, all feels very cool. Still no date for this, but yeah. uh, the content is expected sometime later this year. Um, this is uh, qu- quickly becoming my most anticipated uh, bit of... There's two Mario games coming out this year. What am I talking about? I'm very excited for this. 
And finally, we have the results from this past weekend's Splatfest. The contest was vanilla versus strawberry versus mint chip. And a halftime report showed all three teams in a virtual three-way dead heat. But vanilla ended up squeaking it out in the end with 45 points. Mint Chip came in a distant second with 12 points, and Strawberry had zero points. No points for Strawberry. In terms of votes, Vanilla was the clear favorite with 55.04% of the votes. Uh, Strawberry with 19.03%, and Mint Chip with 25.93%. 19% for Strawberry to Vanilla's 55. Yeah, I... um. Uh, I, I'm surprised by the dominance of Vanilla as, like, as far as like votes go. Uh, I, I would be surprised, but Mark, you know I'm a big Bare Naked Ladies fan, and they tell us that Vanilla is the finest of the flavors. <laughs> you're right. And who am I to uh, disagree with Bare Naked Ladies? Uh, you're no one is who you are. <laughs> I, I am so sorry. That, that felt so mean when I said it. All right, Mark, let's get out of the news. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, remember, uh, you can join our Discord. All you got to do is email us, and we will let you in. Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8BitBetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying thank you for listening.